In Counter-Strike, being an in-game leader on a top roster is no easy task. You spend so much time thinking about the other side that your own fragging can take a back seat. But when you don't put up the stats that your fans expect, they can get vicious. Everybody respects someone that can lead by example. The most valuable possible player is someone that could adapt on the fly, come up with the strats, and carry their weight and kills all at the same time. I don't even think James realizes he can actually save. He probably feels like there's presence in the B-bomb site, but the clutch is on. Oh, that smoke, it catches the rail, and that's a little bit unfortunate. Otherwise, maybe he's gonna try some prison pressure. He's still gonna go for it. He picks up that one. No! Oh, no! Out of this world! Game! Every team wants an IGL that can frag, but there's only so many seasoned veterans with cracked aim and beautiful minds to go around. So some teams need to get creative. You can see plays far away, right. plays deep in the pit. Nico far away. Is he gonna he's gonna flash Hooksy into T Sport. No, as Watch if. this. As if. Hang on a moment. Oh, they're bringing out the big guns. Yeah. They've deployed their secret weapon. Love Hooksy that. running through the long doors with a flash from Nico to set him up. Enter Rasmus Hooksy Nielsen, a man who, by all accounts, is not the mythical fragger IGL. Surprise production didn't bring up his ADR there. Savage production. <laughs> There it, All right, there it is. Oh my oh, god, no. why? <laughs> why? He has less ADR than he has deaths. I don't even know what. That's some kind of record. And yet, he's turned his greatest weakness into a strength. Hoopsie. Already counting ring the rotation through CT. Fully up to the task. He gets three. Big money, honey, because he'll farm that with the MP9. And Nico was certainly ready with all of that information. Heidi stuck there. Yeah, you're right. Money. Looks he doesn't need a drop. He can buy his own M4. He's an independent man. Over the past few months, the CSGO community has witnessed the rise of one of the greatest memes in the game's history. All thanks to Hooksy and his performance on G2. Now having to save is Crimbo. That's actually a TK. Hooksy, that's the worst possible solution oh, no. here. Now it's gonna be Monacy. He's gonna have to just try and stick Not to the like fuse. This. Crimbo found the other kill. It's all falling apart here. G2 no, had a no, classic G2 moment. Add that one to the catalog. <laughs> and I think we're gonna call Vertigo done and dusted 13 to six. The morale is broken now. As the team's latest IGL, he pushed the limits of what a leader's stats should look like, while also pushing his team and himself in ways that no one expected. Hooksy knew that his stats weren't great, but he looked all of his haters in the eyes and said, we'll win anyway. Seriously, can smoke the bomb here. They got a molly for sandbag as well. If they piece this one together, it, it could be perfect. There's the molly. That one's the high HP yes, play. Monacy stepped out. Now it's the low HP of Hooksy and JKS. These two, they did it before, but they have to do it again. Well, luckily for them, there is an AWP in the mix as well. They might not have the information. These players are both desperately low. Time ticking away though, and JKS probably needs to strike before the bomb is touched here. Low HP on the defuse, oh, but he can't no. find it. He takes down the defuse and it cancels it. Can he spray again? Hooksy! Yes, he absolutely can. Hooksy with the quad kill. Oh, yeah, they're trying Hooksy though. The dude, they're trying to test our boy Hooksy. They're trying to test Hooksy, dude. He's out of bullets though. They're trying to test Hooksy, dude. He's going so how did Hooksy change the narrative around his subpar stats? How did he show the true value of an IGL while spending so much time at the bottom of the server? And how did he embrace CSGO's latest and greatest meme to become the Giga Chad? A poem about Hooksy. Who right. is Hooksy? For the blind, he is the vision. For the hungry, he is the chef. For the thirsty, he is the water. If Hooksy thinks, I agree. If Hooksy speaks, I'm listening. If Hooksy has one fan, it's me. If Hooksy has no fans, I don't exist at all. Oh, I've got goosebumps, Chad. That was beautiful. All right, folks, you know what time it is. Before we get into the saga of the rise of CSGO's greatest giga Chad, I need to humbly ask you all to sub to the channel and turn on notifications. And if you're a real Giga Chad, you'll come watch some of our streams right here on YouTube. Okay, so the legend of Hooksy begins in August 2022, when G2 Esports was a team looking for answers. After spending the first eight months of the year mostly floundering with their new IGL Alexi B, the roster needed to make changes. Alexi B was out, along with their longtime rifler, Jax. Hi guys, my name is JKS. I'd like to try out for the open rifle role. JKS, who'd impressed with his historic stand in performance win as a part of FaZe, was a no brainer addition to the roster. JKS was kind of the first option because instead of Jax, we needed a player like JKS, who is anchor and lurker. We didn't almost looking for any other player. But G2 needed two new players, and the other name is not what anyone expected. Uh, my name is Hooksy, and I'm Hooksy. I'm applying for the. IGL role. 
Well, what makes you think he would be a better IGL than me? I can Shut the f up, Nico. You're hired. Hooksy was a big question mark for G2. On one hand, he led his previous team, Copenhagen Flames, to two majors, even making the playoffs in Antwerp. 30 seconds left for an impeccable clutch. Siphon's down on top, but there it is! Finally, the fifth time's the charm. The Copenhagen Flames, they lift the curse. They shed their demons and burn brighter than ever before. Playoffs in Antwerp. Yeah, we're gonna see the Flames in front of a crowd and they do it. On the other hand though, there were still plenty of unknowns. With Jax gone, Hooksy was the obvious player to play entry on T side, but he hadn't historically played that role before. And it's not like his stats really inspired a lot of confidence. We are not questioning here, at least not me personally, if he deserved the chance. He definitely did. Right? He bought his ticket to G2, you know, fair and square. He, earned, he worked for it, he got the you know, chance, he bought the ticket and he deserved it, right? But like we spoke about this role change, he was the least aggressive player in Copenhagen Flames and yet he had a, the lowest amount of impact, right? In terms of, in terms of numbers, right? And there were seemingly other options available to G2, like Alex or even Boomich. So why the hell did they settle for Hooksy specifically? He has different vision, like comparing to IGLs we had before. And he liked to play more loose. And with players we have in the team, I think it's good. And that's the biggest reason why, we cho why we've chosen him. And he is not scared to tell to anyone, like whatever in the, in the eye after practice, after game. And I think we needed this kind of IGL. What I do is I grab and I compare this to the in-game leaders around him. Uh, or the, sorry, the in-game leaders who have either come or gone or the other ones who are rumored. And I go, well, none of the names that people can list have achieved as much as Hooksy as an in-game leader in the last six to eight months. Ultimately, Hooksy's pedigree convinced G2 to take a shot on him. After all, his low stats are pretty common with IGLs. You don't have to kill if you can lead. And G2's coach, Xtaz, actually vouched for Hooksy in an interview with HLTV, where he said that he and the team's new IGL were on the same page. But fans weren't convinced. They started picking on Hooksy's subpar stats immediately, and things only got worse when he finally debuted for G2 during the Blast Fall premiere. His third headshot of the round, but his first kill. Let's go, Hooksy. Oh, oh it's a <laughs> little messy. To put it simply, Hooksy underperformed. Even in games where they won, Buddy was going like 3 and 16, where his teammates were dropping 30 bombs. Hooksy's performances were so brutal that it eventually spawned a meme. Whenever Hooksy did anything, die, get a kill, breathe in the direction of an enemy, Twitch chat spammed the Giga Chat emote. Nico and Monacy spring to life and through the smoke, there it is. As Dossa dead through the back of the head and the headshots are gonna keep coming. The disrespect out the gate, Henry. We saw FaZe attempt this, if you remember, pushing down towards middle, trying to disrespect their opponents. Didn't work out for them too well, but it's actually working out very nicely for G2. I say that with baited breath. Okay. As we are seeing headshots galore here towards a banana. Rock and sock and counter strike here, but Hunter will come out on top. He will manage to get three kills in total, a little bit bumpy towards the end, but a clean round, I suppose. If you're not familiar with the Giga Chad meme, it's based on a picture of Russian bodybuilder Ernest Kalimov, and its many variations are pretty widespread now. The idea behind the meme is that, as a perfect specimen of masculinity, the Giga Chad is confident that every option they choose is the correct one, obviously. And Hooksy was CSGO's Giga Chad. Dupree's honing in closer, flash on the feet of Hooksy, goes for the Monacy fight, insta-dink, sets up Hooksy, oh, he can't get the kill, Zaiwu blocks him in the face. Despite his clear underperformance, G2 added fuel to the meme fire, using a quote from an HLTV interview Hooksy had done days earlier. Although there were already people who felt that the org was going a bit too hard on their new IGL, so Hooksy's play basically became a joke. Hooksy for me is the best player in the world right now. I don't want to, to jinx anything. Ooh. We've tried that in, in Astralis when we uh, were playing in Cologne against Navi with, with Zeus. And I think it was the second time in his career that he ever got 30 kills because we were trying to exploit him. So never again. So uh, Hooksy is the best player in the world right now and uh, we'll try everything to avoid him. In fact, you couldn't even go on the global offensive subreddit without seeing at least a single thread talking about his low stats. And even his most modest plays continued to be met with cries of Giga Chat. But to be fair, Hooksy's comment about not needing to frag wasn't necessarily wrong. See, the meme in the community is that Nico kind of usurps his IGLs. Whether it's true or not, the fans have often felt that he does best with a firmer hand on the server. Between Nico and Monacy alone, G2 already had a lot of firepower. If Hooksy could just make sure that everyone got what they needed and maybe pick up a few scraps of glory here and there, it could probably still work out. And at this first event, it kind of did. Unfortunately for them, 
The blast season doesn't get any easier once they get there. JKS and Nico locking it in on the cross. He comes out through his own smoke, but his back's turned to Nico, and that is a lethal error. A fantastic showing out of Hunter and Nico. G2 made fourth at blast. Maybe they didn't push to new heights, but it was a respectable performance, and they earned a spot at the fall finals as a result. It feels really good. That was the goal for the for the tournament for us, and uh, I'll be honest, after the first few days of practice and how hard it was for me to transition into uh, speaking English all the time, I, I wouldn't say I didn't believe it, but at the same time, I, I felt it was more like tougher than I thought it would be. So I'm really happy that we actually pulled through in the end. But none of this gave G2 fans any more insight into the hooks he picked up, since through it all, he was still playing like an absolute bot. Actually lost his vision in the smoke and still came back, but that frag, Oh, it gets Hooksy instead. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> Just a thousand ways to die with Hooksy. And sure, given all of their extra responsibilities, IGLs often get a bit of a pass in terms of their personal stats if it means success for the roster as a whole. But Hooksy's stats were pushing that leniency to its absolute limits. Thankfully, there were some obvious changes to G2's gameplay, including some setups that he refined on his previous teams. So first, this is from his time in Copenhagen Flames. He first throws a top connector smoke and take a look at the setup here. And I want you just to remember a lot of these details. So top connector smoke here, two players towards mid, two players at ramp, one player at palace. Take a look at the map. You see the same thing. Two players here towards this mid position, two players at ramp, one at palace. This is definitely going to be an A split once again. And the details are very similar. You'll see the pathing here, same thing. One player towards the bottom side of middle, one player going along this catwalk side. And then Hunter, he's going to do that peek towards that connector side. This time he actually loses the fight. But Hooksy, he still does the same thing. He goes right into connector to trade that kill. And you'll see right on the map once again, something very similar. Pressure here towards this connector side, towards A. It's now down to these players at A to put pressure into A now. And that's exactly what happens. JKS is smoked out, so it's on Nico to actually come out of the palace and find this kill on a player towards Ticket. And Hooksy he just does the exact same thing. Goes through the connector smoke on the left side, trying to catch a potential jungle player. Doesn't see anything, but he still wants to get the space, so he's gonna go and go for it. But you'll basically see that this strat is basically almost the same as what he ran in Copenhagen Flames. And this is really, uh, you know, kind of the influence that Hooksy has brought. Plus, once fans had a chance to hear Hooksy's point of view, he became an instant favorite. He was honest about his performance and about his role in the team. Well, I look at it in this way that, of course, I would like to shoot more and I feel like I shoot as well. Uh, obviously, you can't kill two people and expect to win every time. Um, but at the same way, I look at it like, if I killed 10 more in both the first and the third, would we have won? Probably not. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I'm, of course, disappointed with my individual performance, but at the same time, I don't feel like that's what we should take away from this game. For a dude that was being memed into oblivion for bottom fragging, Hooksy always kept his cool. He accepted the criticism, laughed about it, and vowed to improve. I take things pretty lightly. I don't really, like all the way back from um, all my other teams, I've got a lot of faith for my individual performance, for example, and I don't really care too much. Like Most of the people who talk to me, uh, who talks trash, doesn't really know what they're talking about, so I'm fine with that. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to do my way and then we'll see how it goes. That endeared him to fans and their support propelled the Giga Chad to new heights. More than anything, that was a series for G2 where, you know, Monacy didn't really do that much and they still had a comfortable win. The, the riflers were doing the brunt of the work and Hooksy had more than 10 kills and what more can you ask? Another miracle. Well, Hooksy was having a good time with it. Uh, that was one thing we did Giga get Chad. to see yesterday. Yeah, uh, apparently a Giga Chad of sorts. In that series against MIBR at ESL Pro League, Hooksy was pretty close to an even KD ratio, but he went deeply negative in the next as the rest of G2 had to defeat big for him. Even so, Hooksy pulled off a big play that kept his team alive in overtime. Well, Luckily for them, there is an AWP in the mix as well. They might not have the information. These players are both desperately low. Time ticking away though, and JKS probably needs to strike before the bomb is touched here. Low HP on the diffuser, oh, but he can't no. find it. He takes down the diffuser, that cancels it. Can he spray again? Hooksy! Yes, he absolutely can. Hooksy with the quad kill. Tie things up at 17 to 17. A round where they took a deficit to kick things off. Hunter dropped and they limped in towards this side, but it looked like they had no chance in the retake and he delivers. But then something strange happened. Maybe it was the fresh Mediterranean air in Malta. Maybe Hooksy switched his settings and something just clicked. I'm kidding, that never works. Remember, friends don't let friends change their settings every round. 
But for whatever reason, after that big series, Hooksy looked different. First, against For The Win, he was plus 10, even though both maps were actually complete blowouts. And then unexpectedly, he somehow was voted player of the match on HLTV. Hooksy managed a positive HLTV rating on both maps against FaZe and again became player of the match. And after a 2-0 win over Outsiders, Hooksy was voted player of the match for a third time. Since he didn't really carry any of the maps, it was clearly just an attempt to keep the GigaChad meme pumping. And whether or not the fans that voted for him meant it or not, they actually manifested another, scarier Hooksy. Yeah, we see a fast approach towards middle here. They'll be pushing through the bombardment of utility and Hooksy with a lovely double kill there towards middle. That's about as good as it gets, Chad. And that is the perfect T-side mid take. Look at all the util, the donut smoke, the mid smoke. Another one for Hooksy on Stadoda. Good job. That's what they're hoping for. Oh. Instead, Nico's been swung on, and so now Hooksy does have to win this with the spot. That's he not the defuser. Know. He needs one more bullet, oh. and he's going to get it. Hooksy with the 1v2. Oh, yeah, they're trying Hooksy, though. The smoke actually a little bit early, but it was absolutely perfect. He's out of bullets, though. Oh. Oh. And he's going to keep going. Oh, oh. beautiful defense. And Ace to close out the round with. That's going to get G2 fired up. G2 eventually dropped out of EPL after losing to Vitality. But Hooksy, he was now firmly the Giga Chad. No, it's fun to watch other matches as well because now I just see my name in Twitch all the time, no matter who's playing. Yeah, Did you see that's that coming true. though? Like, was that like. Like, I didn't see it coming. I'm casting this week, last week. All yeah. I see is your name. I'm like, what is going on? Oh, it's, so, it's so weird. It doesn't matter where I go. Like, I look on YouTube, I see my face. I look on <laughs> on WhatsApp in our private group for the team. They are posting <laughs> memes about me all the time. I look on Twitter, I see my face. I look on Facebook, I, I, it doesn't matter where I look. ESO added an emote of the meme to their Twitch channel, and it saw plenty of views. Thanks. Give me your famous. I'll take all the bullets. It's Hooksy's world and no one's getting into B. Check it out. He drops the one, picks up the other one. Absolute bigger <laughs> champ. Hooksy even got the Super Stidham treatment. Over a period of six consecutive maps, he maintained a 1.0 rating or better, something that he had never managed against teams of this caliber. But it wasn't just his own stats that were up, though. Monacy also notably popped off during this time all thanks to Hooksy. I think he fits good with us. Uh, his calls and uh, his play style, it fits good. And uh, I feel better to play with him uh, than before I played with the, with the old lineup. And when the new G2 Esports lineup finally played their first RMR game, it was a 16-0 clapping of ecstatic. Hooksy was legitimately at the top of the leaderboard. But for all the GigaChad fans, this was the absolute highest of highs before the inevitable lowest of lows. I am with the frag, Monacy with it all to do. He gets the wall bang in and hunts for the last man. He's got the kit, needs the ace, only hits the leg shot. The USP comes out, but it's a cold day in hell. Game of Legion have eliminated G2 from the European RMR as they stay alive, bound for the major. G2 took a narrow loss against Gamer Legion at the RMR, missing their chance to attend the major. And across the three maps, Hooksy was, unfortunately, minus 23. Since then, Coach Extaz has departed the team, and it's not clear how the roster will change. But despite his recent stumble, Hooksy has proved to be more than CSGO's most beloved meme. He's also provided us one of the most inspiring stories the game has seen in a while. Hooksy ascended from ridicule to reverence. He didn't need to frag to win, and he was brave enough to say that out loud. But then, he fragged anyways quickly into this B-side again. Last time, it did work out. This time, Hooksy delivers two quick kills as they try to get beyond that van. So things to an immediate halt. Hooksy goes ahead, body bags a third, and then further damage onto Head Trick. Hunter getting closer and closer, can't manage to put down SDY, but now there's so much support here that it should be G2 to just smooth oh, finish it off. And how about a Hooksy ace to end the first 15? On a more serious note, it is clear why fans were so swept away by Hooksy Mania. He just kept it real. So whenever he pulled a rabbit out of his hat or put up a decent rating, we knew that Hooksy's excitement was real too. Hooksy is a reminder that every player, even a 27 year old IGL leading two of the hottest stars in the game right now can find ways to improve. And when they do, they should get every bit of credit for that. One final question, the most important one. Whose world is it? Oh, it's Hooksy's world. Hell yeah, it is. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring the notification bell. 
For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit us up on our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok.